All right, guys, I am down here in Tequila, Mexico. Can't believe it. So far south. Um, anyway, I thought since I was down here and uh, absorbed in the Mexican culture, I thought I would go over some uh, Mexican art styles. All right, let's get into it. Oh, that was a long shot. All right, our first art style from Mexico is going to be Mexican modernism. And this was uh, an early 20th century uh, movement, and it was blending artistic or modern artistic trends with uh, Mexican cultural heritage. It's it's sought heritage, heritage. It sought to create a distinct national visual language. Often, it portrayed everyday life and rural landscapes and in indigenous traditions but it did so in a modern style a lot of it, it it used old colors and i guess for the time it was uh innovative techniques um to reflect to reflect uh mexico's evolving identity all right let's take a look at this oh i gotta click in here i always forget here's a woman in the style of mexican modernism I, that is beautiful very, you know, uh, reminiscent of a modern day flat, uh, vector work, but beautiful. I mean, imagine using this for like one of your clients, let's say a, a Mexican restaurant or something like that. Just yeah, very, definitely has the feel of Mexico, the warm, warm color palettes, but it's bold. You can absolutely pick up on the ethnicity here. Beautiful, beautiful work here. I love the, the, the sun in the back too. What a great, uh, graphical element there. A oh, man, uh, that's kind of cool. That's more of a painterly feel to his face, but the background is a bit more abstract and, um, cubist, you know, ge geometric shaping back there. That's a little bit flatter. I, it's definitely a painting, but it also feels like a painting in front of a painting. Pretty cool. Pretty cool mid journey. Where are you going with this? Again, ethnicity is definitely picked up. Could it be that it has Mexican in the the style, the word Mexican? Maybe that's influencing our 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 look here. A burger. Now, I think this one's really cool because you're getting aesthetics that uh, you get. You know, obviously you have the background and and the the desert like scene, but with the burger. I mean, I don't typically get things that look like jalapenos and, uh, you know, we have limes here and, you know, there's definitely a feel for Mexican culture that's built into this and, uh, very interesting. I, I wish I knew what mid journey was thinking and how I came up with this, but uh, here's a cheeseburger. I mean, the last thing you're going to have down in Mexico is a cheeseburger. Come on, we're going burrito, but. I want to, this is really good because you're pulling something from a different culture and you're throwing it into a very cultural, uh, art style. So we're really testing out what the response of this style would be. An octopus. I thought this was kind of cool. This is, uh, again, it's very flat, uh, almost, a a, a, a wood, wood, uh, wood print or a screen print, very flat, very vector like. But beautiful and the color palette. I love these like oranges and warms, but but with a, a hint of or or a counter with the the teal. Very very powerful and just imagine like I mean Mint Journey really. Now let's look at this. Interesting. It's not precisely symmetrical. I like that. I like what Mint Journey did there. You know, it's an asymmetrical octopus. It almost looks symmetrical, but it's not which uh very important like uh, that's very important when you go into portraits and stuff but very cool i like that i'm i'm you know that could be a great flourish on a menu or you know i keep going to to uh food i just came back from mexico and the food was delicious but uh i go with food because also uh, it is such a strong, strong, how do you say this? Food is such a strong part of their culture, of, of the Mexican culture. So it 
it's not just, I'm not reducing the culture to food. It's just food is a very strong part of the Mexican culture. A forest. I like that. This reminds me of, oh boy, I can't remember the artist. It did work for the concept of uh, It's a Small World uh, at Disney. Very flat, but a lot of depth to it. But flat lay, I'm going to say vector side, pre-vector, but um, the very flat, geometric, almost folk style, folk, folky, folk, folky style uh, work. But that was like the concept work for It's a Small World. That's what it reminds me of. And that probably because I'm, I'm American and we're limited in our capabilities to, to, to experience worlds in more three-dimensional aspects. And here is a house. Now, this is really cool. I love the tone. I love the soft tones. I love, uh, you know, how the cactus is, um, counters the, the backdrop of the orange, but you also find that the, the, the color palette is very muted. You know, it's, it has some areas of high contrast, but from a color point of view it's not it's not that high contrast obviously the the cactus up front here is high is higher contrast there's a little bit of shadow here dark shadow here but we get these walls and and the sky it, it's all kind of muted and soft uh i really like this i i think this is beautiful and uh just uh i just realized these rocks just kind of go right into the stairs interesting but I bet, the, uh, so there was part of the movement, uh, the Mex Mexican modernism wasn't just painting. It was also, uh, architecture. And I, I believe this falls right into that, that aspect. All right. So that's Mexican modernism. Give it a shot. Get some, some flavor in your prompts. All right. Our next one is muralism. And this was actually, uh, part of the. Mexican modernism movement, but it involved creating large-scale murals on public buildings, usually to convey uh, social, political, and historical messages. It was also about bringing art to the masses and and letting... It was aimed to make art accessible to all, depicting uh, Mexico's cultural heritage, struggles of the working class, and um, the indigenous history. The movement had a profound impact on public art and played a role in in uh, shaping the nation's uh, identity. So let's take a look at this. One of the important things when you're looking at this is, like, this is a painting of a woman, but there is a sense of of scale, a sense of, of that this, this could be massive. And uh, I was trying to, like, figure out why I feel that this could be represented in a huge scale and i'm not really sure i'm uh to be honest i'm it it may be the the relationship of her scale to like some of these you know i see this as kind of a window a window here and you know maybe it's just making her feel massive in in comparison to these uh smaller details that i'm identifying in the background but absolutely beautiful rendering of a woman in the style of muralism. Here's a man. Now, this, uh, you have this fantasy element to it. Uh, obviously, you know, not just dreamlike. It's, he is dreaming. And, and this is, uh, you know, making a statement, a, a statement about, uh, dreaming and where your, your head is, uh, in, in, during those little slices of death we have, I, I don't think this is representing any strong social commentary, but it is in the style of representing strong social commentary, I, if that makes sense to you. Uh, it feels like it should be very impactful. I don't think it is. I don't... I, I, I think it's somebody taking a little nap, a siesta, but it's all this wonderful stuff going on inside the the brain while 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 doing that a burger now again this feels very grand and i i don't know it it's obviously rendering out heavy brush strokes and these large you know it it's it's um embossed on the surface almost because you can see the the shadowing and maybe that's giving the the scale to this i i hope i'm not 
just implying this because I put the prompt in, but you could absolutely see this on like just a huge wall, you know? And it, uh, I mean, I w instantly I'm, maybe it's because I've been in airports this week. I don't know. I could see this like coming around a corner in a, in a, in a big, um, terminal and like, Hey, this is where the food court is. And you get this big mural and interesting too. Like I, you were seeing uh, renderings of the limes in here and, you know, definitely the Mexican color palette that seems to go with the oranges, the greens, and that's countered with some blues and teals and, uh, very, very cool. And this one's, while it is, it's still a flat rendering. It's, it, it does have some depth to it. That's, that's interesting. And, and you have the symbolism of this big sun again, that seems to come up a lot within mid journey and, and rendering these, these Mexican styles, the octopus. Now tell me you wouldn't see that on the side of a, a building that would just, that's awesome. I mean, it's all. It's, it's muralism, but with a sense of graffiti to it in a way, but it's a, not graffiti because it's, it's more, uh, I don't want to say thought out. It's more precise. Not that graffiti can't be precise, but it's just, I'm, I'm um, being these generalizations, but God, that is cool. And I love the depth of how this op octopus sits within this these these flowers and it's you know it, it intertwined like the the octopus is intertwining into these these uh this floral patterns and it's, i think it's beautiful and of course like doesn't that just scream that it should be on like an epic scale on a mural it it makes sense to me and uh it's rendered in such a neat way i I love like these, these little capsules of, of color, uh, and, and cellular type things that are stretched out and really gives me the feel of what was going on in, in the U S of the arts and crafts movement. You know, we, we, we see style like that or technique like that, but yeah, that's uh, muralism and that's the octopus. I love this. I love back here where these tentacles are just getting lost in in the in in the floral bed bed of flowers i don't know okay try this out this is cool tree uh, this almost gives you the feel of pointillism but it's not but again like it really gives you a sense of scale like like this can be you know reproduced on on a massive massive scale and and you would just it's like it's designed for you to be submersed in it, but very cool. And I love the depth. We have the atmospheric perspective. You know, as I say, I've brought this up before. We get more saturated, contrasty, up closer to to where we are in, in space represented. And then you go back, like this is an excellent example of it. The further you go back, the less contrast, the less vibrance you get. And that gives the feeling of depth and it, it fades off to this, this, this grayish blue, just phenomenal, phenomenal. This is beautiful stuff. House, look at this. I like this. I, you know, there's a lot going on here. And does it scream Mexican to me? No, but that's also like a preconceived notion of the, the, the heritage of, of Mexico and, uh, the, the nationality. And then you're like, well, no, let me think about that. Maybe up in the mountain. I mean, I was staying up in the mountains and, you know, maybe this could be a scene, obviously rainforests down there. And, you know, you can have this kind of thick, lush feeling. There's a lot of oranges and these blues, There's obviously a night scene. It's, uh, got a, a sense of folk art to it, which I'm going to get to more of that in a second. But it's just very cool. I love it because it also gives a sense of, I hope that it, it, there's a feeling of like a, a, a gothic looming feeling to it. And, uh, you know, it's the deeper shadows. It's, it's uh, the, the fencing, the, the silhouetting. I just, it's just a beautiful piece. I really like this. I, I find this very interesting, but all right. That is a 
house in muralism. Give it a shot. All right, our next style is, okay, I need to pronounce this correctly. I hope I am doing it justice. Oaxacan folk art. It uh, Oaxacan folk art uh, encompasses a, a wide range of crafts, including intricate wood carvings, colorful textiles, pottery, ceramics. These uh, creations often feature intricate patterns, symbolic imagery, bold colors, and it's reflecting the cultural diversity and ind indigenous heritage of the area, the the. Oaxacan area of Mexico, and it's celebrated for its craftsmanship, attention to detail, and ability to capture the essence of local traditions and stories. So, all right, let's take a look at Oaxacan. Where's my clicker? All right. Um, so this is a woman in the style of Oaxacan. I mean, doesn't this look like it could have come off of like a wooden bowl or something or um, portrayed in that way, but it's also a little bit modern and I, I think I think Midjourney's doing an excellent rendition of of what it thinks it it should be creating here um again where we have this flat style you know vector this and and wow that would be great I, I really a lot of interest in her face because you know there's not a lot of tones in here but it's very descriptive of of what um you know in her ears and her earrings I love it, Oaxacan. And here's a man, uh, Oaxacan. I believe it was also very important in um, this style representing animals. I, I think animals, uh, the, the uh, being included in, in these renderings. Now, this one I don't think was executed as nicely as the woman. That's okay. I mean, there's just some weird, like I'm looking at this tree and this just weird continuity that isn't isn't there it's almost as if it doesn't know that this should be flat in some areas like there's almost so much too much shadow depth in a way um but very interesting he's a very interesting character very folkish and and would i say juvenile in its rendering style and that's not to be a slight it's just a descriptor a burger and look at it. this burger looks like it's carved out of wood you definitely have the background which is an Oa Oaxacan style patterning and then you have this burger that's come out in front of it that's made out of wood or something and remember wooden pottery or pottery and and wood carving utensils are very popular in this style but what what I find interesting is you have these these flowers and and garnishes that are kind of a transition between the very three-dimensional burger and the very flat patterning behind it it's it reminds me of almost puppeteer stage work it's like this weird transition between two two realities uh very interesting what it's thinking you know this cheese is just it's it's rendered in such a way that it's so wooden i mean i guess it's all to, except for the lettuce the lettuce kind of stands out as being very realistic but everything else could be rendered out of uh a, a wood sculpture in a way the octopus look at that you know this looks like it's got um, a type of uh, very uh, watercolor type, but also a, a more opaque, maybe a, I don't know, a, a more of a, an opaque uh, type rendering also with the lighter watercolor and, and the color palette. Again, we've got the oranges against the blues and the teals and then the darker blues. It's, it's very, the color contrast is, is so nice and, and, it being framed in this off white gives it just such a a warm feel to it even though there's a lot of cool colors in it it's there's it's it's warm and and inviting but again like imagine that just wrapped around like a ceramic coffee cup or a wooden coffee cup it just it's it has this it's it's really just hitting me like the tone of it and look at that i mean that's that's exactly what I would expect from Oaxacan uh, style. You know, it's a pattern and, you know, does Midjourney still do tiling? I mean, you could tile this and dang, you got wallpaper. I, I know there are, is this completely symmetrical? No, it is not completely symmetrical. No, not at all. <laughs> what am I thinking? 
I need more coffee. Jesus. All right. So this is a forest in, in the Oahakan style. And here's a house. Look at that. That is just so cool. So folksy, folky. It It's flat. It's painted. But again, like we're getting the sun and the moon are very important um, to mid journey in representing these things. Uh, some of these shapes are a little, little off. I don't know what's going on here. It looks like it was humanoid, but went a little askew. The rendering of the house is just so cute. And these, this tree, I love this tree right here. Very cool. And this bird's got like a fish flying off it. Anyway, I don't know what this big white thing is. It's interesting. And I think if you dialed in a prompt with this, you could get some just absolutely stunning work. It's brilliant. Just really, really cool. Uh, I love the graphical elements. I love the flat feel to it. It's it's just wild. All right, that's a house in the style of Oaxacan. I'm probably just destroying that. I'm so sorry. Doing the best I can. I went down to Mexico. I knew. I literally, when I got off the plane, I, I had to ask somebody. I was like, gracias means thank you, right? And they're like, yes. <laughs> oh, good. I, and that got me through the weekend. I uh, I didn't have to know much more. All right. That's Oaxacan. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in this week and checking out these Mexican art styles. I think uh, if, if you want to add a little bit of flair and, you know, they definitely got a, it's got a great feeling for, um, you know, it's summertime out. It's still August. Uh, and, and I think these really give the mood of a uh, warm summer sun and, and, um, you know, a lot of people love the vac. I hate, I vacationed down in Mexico. I, I did. That was my first time. It was awesome. Uh, what an adventure. Do I need to make a video about? No, that stuff stays in Mexico. Anyway, um, thank you for joining me. If you could like this video, that would be great. If you could comment below, Hey, let's, let's talk about it. Correct my pronunciation, please. I, 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 I don't want to be that guy. I want to learn. Anyway, um, and uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be great. Um, and until next week, I got to come. I got some big projects coming up. I want to share with you guys. And all right, until next time.